with Western Canada. That's where the, the population and the wealth of um, Canada is moving towards, especially with, with, um, with, with natural resources. And when you look at Vancouver, especially with the, the commercial and you have, you have mountains to the north, you have oceans, you have the Pacific Ocean, and it's, there's only so much de uh, developable land. So especially on the office side, the only way to really build is either on top of existing or, or teardowns with, um, with re um, redevelopment. So the only way uh, for a direction for commercial real estate is, 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 uh, is to move east, which moves away from the, from the population, which is a bit of a challenge. It's a lot more space, and with Edmonton, Edmonton's basically the gateway for the north, right? So that's a, a major staging ground for a lot of the the, um, you know, the resource companies. So there's definitely a, a, a big demand for for warehouse type uses, um, and as well as a number of head offs, especially with the energy sector, with respect to Calgary, and that's why Calgary has done so well over the last 20 years the growth and the expansion, and has really matured as, as one of the top cities in, in Canada. For Edmonton, the, the, the big demand will be for light manufacturing, assembly, and as well as um, warehouse. And I, I think a lot of that manufacturing will, will still be, well, the positive impact will be Ontario, um, where the bulk of Canadian manufacturing is located. So Ontario, has benefited in the past of the expansion of uh, resources in northern Alberta. The challenge with this is that we've been talking about this for 20 years, but technology has made it a lot more feasible um, over the past five years, and as well as the, the, the expectations for employers. Um, there, there's, I think there's a certain element of trust issue with people working remotely. But there's better accountabilities, better models now that you can easy, a lot easier um, uh, monitor and track productivity, and as well as to give people a little bit more flexibility because I think people are working longer hours, uh, they have a lot more demands, and to create a little bit more flexible workspace really helps, especially if if they can work from from uh, home for one or two days a week, and uh, and then head into the office to. You know, re-engage with their with their, their 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 colleagues and their managers to make sure that they're still part of the company. It's a different way of of, of people shopping. And if you look at the demographics, the demographic is, is is getting older, and with the big box, the way they're set up now, to a certain extent, you're work you're walking for like hours looking for um, a, a, a specific, um, you know, a cup or a coffee maker, right? I, I think as it, the, the new type of retail is going to be reflective of the changing um, sort of needs of consumers and the impact of um, online shopping, whereby maybe you don't need to keep inventory of, you know, 20 different um, cups or, or, or coffee makers. Maybe you only need five and you only have to, you need 10 of them because more people are buying online rather than having to pick it up from the store. In particular Vancouver because again they're the limited um, space that they have for, for that type of retailers and I think they have to be a lot more creative in creating that, that type of space and experience for for consumers so the, 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 the trend definitely applies for the Vancouver market.